Steve Bowers and Janet Wilbanks. And we welcome you to Six of the City. Our colleague Cassandra Fuller is away this day. We'll get a big update from her coming up next week and get all the details on whatever she's been doing. Absolutely. How she got a day off. We're trying to figure that out, but we'll figure that out by, ne by next week yes. when she's back. Yes. Well, who all have we got on this show? Oh, listen, today we have the executive director, Sherry Freeman from the Jackson Symphony. We're going to talk to them about a March 9th performance coming right. up. Uh, Denise Walton with RIFA is here. We'll get an update from Denise. And then making his first appearance on the show is... <laughs> is that right? J.R. Ross, okay. the chief executive officer with West Tennessee Healthcare. His agent's a tough negotiator. You know I mean? uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing this 18 years, and this is his first time on this, this show. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, that's that, right. Now, now we know. We can get him back now. Now, with the uh, Jackson-Madison County Library, we have Shane Plunk, who All is right. their adult services coordinator. And then our friend Peter Knoll, with general manager and CEO with West Tennessee PBS, will be joining us. All right. And then our music today. Okay. We're going to be talking, we're going to, be talking to Reese Horton. We want to hear her performance. She's been with us before, but we'll also be talking to her. Absolutely. A little bit later on the show. So stay right where you are. That's all lined up. We're ready to go with this Six, Six in, in the, the City. city. I'm Mark Taylor. I'm the owner of Renew Biomedical Services based out of here in Jackson, Tennessee. We're a provider of uh, biomedical services for medical professionals. At Renew Biomedical, our use of telecom is of utmost importance. We have to reach our customers in a timely fashion so we can diagnose and service their equipment needs. So e Broadband allows Renew Biomedical to connect effectively with our customers in whichever way they choose, via email, phone, Skype, teleconferencing, and any way you can imagine. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Sherry Freeman is with us. She is the executive director of the Jackson Symphony. We've got a couple of concerts left in this season. One is coming up soon, plus another event or two to talk about. So, Sherry, it's always good to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Right, so we're headed toward March 9th, and what's going to happen? We are. Now? It's our final Masterworks concert of the series, which is our classical concert. We're doing what's called Classic Edge. We're excited to have world-renowned cellist uh, Constantine Heydrich join the Jackson okay. Symphony on stage. He'll be performing uh, Shostakovich's Cello Concerto Number no. 1, which is widely considered the most difficult solo, uh, you know, for okay. a cello ever right. written. Oh, wow. So what a great evening that will He's be to hear him on. perform that. Okay. We'll also be performing the Tippet right uh, following his performance which is a, a kind of a life to death it's a very dramatic piece so it's symphony number no. four, four and we're looking forward to hearing that so it'll be a great evening with uh, the jackson symphony and our orchestra doing what they do best right. which is you know perform and the ned's a lovely setting for us okay, so with very up close and personal there oh, yeah. Feel like a, a bit of the orchestra, you yeah. know, really. Close. All right, so that's coming up March 9th, which will be a Saturday night, right? March Saturday night, night. March 9th, at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. All right, so be aware that is, it will be at the NED. Great thing about the NED is, yeah, you are close enough that you kind of start moving with the symphony. That's as right. They, you know, you watch them work as a unit, and it's pretty phenomenal. It really is. It's, an, it's a nice view. Now, the thing that makes it a little more difficult is we only have 40 seats left. So okay. if you want a ticket to see this, <laughs> Okay. You, you might need to four two make seven a six four four zero right four two seven six four four zero. That's that call, right. Or That's go to right. thejacksonsymphony.org. Correct. So Correct. we got forty tickets left. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got forty right. tickets. Okay. So I could be wrong when I get back to the office. Could <laughs> okay. only be thirty five. It'll be thirty five <laughs> down to thirty or whatever. Okay. That's right. We'll look forward to that. 
Well, it's a it's a, a real highlight to the, to the season. There is another Pops concert that will close the there season is. coming we, up in, in April. April the 6th. Uh, right. And uh, it'll be the Women of Soul here at the Carl Perkins Civic Center. Okay. A great night, a fun concert to close out our Pop series. So it's hard to believe yeah. that the 63rd season is down to two concerts. Two concerts. Wow. Wow. Well, the Valentine's mm -hmm. show was just absolutely phenomenal. It was. It, was it really night. was. Now, now, you mentioned you had something coming up. Really special. We do. On um, March the 21st, we'll be doing our Ballads and Boots Night, which is a, a big night for the Jackson Symphony. This is a fundraiser that we do. Well, this will be our third year doing that, and we're really excited. It's a songwriter's night. We're really excited this year to have uh, Trainee Anderson, who wrote uh, co-wrote the Heart Like a Truck, which... Okay. Uh, which she writes on Lainey Wilson's team. Okay. Then Jacob Davis, who did Buy Dirt uh, for Luke Bryant. Uh, okay. And then Dan and Reed Isabel, the Brothers Hunt, who have had numerous hits. And uh, the most recent, I think, The Kind of Love We Make, which is just, they're just all outstanding in their own right. Really excited about that night. Uh, not sure, you know, our tickets are at sold out. Oh, so right, we, okay. but we, you know, we might have a table. Where will this be? That will be at Hub City Brewery. At Hub City Brewery, okay. Right. So that's the 27th of March. 21st, 21st of March. 21st of March. Okay. Thursday night the 21st. Thursday night the 21st. Right. It'll start at? It starts around 6. 6, okay. Um, All right, so check with the symphony, see if you still get a ticket. Check with the symphony on that, okay. to, about tickets. Now, you've been doing these for how many years now? Just three years. Three years, but they've yeah. been extremely successful. They have been very successful. This has been a... a outstanding fundraiser for the Jackson Symphony and it really took off from the very beginning. We're so appreciative of the Smith Campbell group of Raymond James who stepped out as a lead sponsor on that. We have many, many organizations that have got behind it, many individuals and you know these great fundraisers like this, uh, they just help us continue the work we do throughout West Tennessee with our regional music centers, with our uh, music and healing at the Kirkland Cancer Center, just a number of opportunities that we've been able to make available from people's generosity and our in support for us. I think on the business side of things, one thing you have seen is that people that come to these as fundraisers, they're into country music and whatever, then get exposed to the symphony. They and really become do. ticket holders. They really do. Wow. They really do. Because people that appreciate great music do just that. They appreciate great music. And a, a lot of, you know, we, we hear that across genres. And we're excited for this. We, we love it. brings in a really young group for us. And okay. we're excited and certainly appreciate all the support we get. Any sponsors we need to mention for the classical concert? No, we, we would always want to thank our seasoned sponsors, which is our, our Allison and Carl Kirkland, Ann and Pat Mann, Elaine and Eugene Reese, the City of Jackson, and the Jackson Symphony League. Okay. They make all, all, all we do possible. Right, and we're so appreciative. Sure, it's good to see you. That classical concert's coming up at the net. It'll be Saturday, March 9th, 7 p.m. As it is. So take note of that change in start time. The class That's will right. start at 7. They right. do. Okay. It's good to see you, Sherry. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate the word very much. Appreciate the Jackson Symphony. Well, stay with us. Denise Walton Rifa coming up next as we continue Six in the City. I'm Dr. Keith H. Taylor, owner and CEO of the Mid South Dental Implant and Oral Surgery Center. Our clinic is unique because it offers oral surgery suites, general dentistry suites, as well as a fully run operating room. E Plus Broadband has never let me down. The reps that actually gave me their personal phone numbers, that they definitely were compassionate. They knew that some of the technical terms they were using I couldn't understand, and they broke them down to me. And I thought that this went a long way. Thank you, E Plus Broadband. For the most reliable drinking water supply at the highest quality, reach for the tap. Our tap water is safe and continues to exceed all government requirements. For more information about our drinking water, visit www.jacksenergy.com slash J-E-A-C-C-R. Move over. It's the law. When approaching work vehicles or crews, move over to create a safety zone. It protects utility workers, law enforcement, firefighters, and emergency personnel. It's not an option. Slow down. It could save a life. Stay safe. Move over. For nine years, the READ team has helped over 2,200 second graders read better through coaching and friendships. Students have increased their word recognition by as much as 300%. Reading on grade level opens the door for Google searches, driver's licenses, and career opportunities. Invest one hour a week to give our second graders every chance to read on grade level. Go to thereadteam.org to sign up. The READ team, changing our community one word at a time. In partnership with JMCSS, Leaders Education Foundation, and United Way of West Tennessee. But you already knew that because you can read.
The Regional Interfaith Association, an important part of this community, we lovingly call it RIFA. And Denise Walton from RIFA is with us. Good to see you. Thank you. It's always so great to be here. All right. So we don't have an event coming up until May. That's right. Stamp okay. Out Hunger is that first Saturday in May, but until then, we're taking a, a bit of a breather. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you know, getting get ready, of course, breath. snack backpack and the soup kitchen, everything is underway, and then we'll be moving into the summer as Indeed. well. Mm -hmm. right. For the bus stop cafe. Okay. Yes. I think we're back on standard time or daylight time. We'll go to daylight time next week, right? Is that right? I think it's next week. Oh, I think it is. 2024 has been a blur oh, so it, far. Maybe so. It's February. Maybe it's the 10th. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe we've got another couple of weeks. Maybe it's the 10th. I so wish I knew. Somewhere like it. Somewhere along there. I'm trying to get ready. I'm anticipating that. Yes. Well, you want to talk about the overall work to explain to people many of the things that, that w with which RIFA is involved. Yes. So in the last couple of weeks, I've had the opportunity to do a few tours of people who are new to our area or are just getting, you know, wind of RIFA and kind of trying to learn a bit more. And so uh, we've had some folks in to tour. And when we end the tour, we wind up in the thrift store when I give it. And so pretty regularly, people are like, wow, I didn't know this was here. Can oh. anybody shop here? Oh, wow. And my okay. answer is absolutely, they can and they do. And my husband said when I first started, you need to find a different way to leave because every day I'm like, oh, I need this, I need that. <laughs> and so I'm loading up <laughs> as I get in my car and he's like, we're gonna have to have you a different exit, Denise, so and, that you don't continue okay. to shop in the, store. the store. It's a lot of fun and there are so many things. I mean, we get donations every day. The city of Jackson is just so grateful. So many folks drop off donations and we have just so many cool things that wind up in the thrift store. It's so awesome. So I would invite anybody to come alongside me and shop. What hour is it open? It is open 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Okay. And all the proceeds from everything that's sold go right back into the ministry and work of RIFA, which is feeding our hungry friends and neighbors. And so that's one of the things that we were talking the other day is when you uh, talk to people, what do they not know? And I said, a lot of people don't know that everybody is welcome to shop in the thrift store and it's okay. fun. And of course, you know, our auction as well, a lot of the Absolutely. things that are donated uh, find their way to the auction by way of Sweet Ellen, who does the, the writing for the auction. And she came on with us last year yes. and we talked about yes. the RIFA auction. And that's on our uh, Facebook page. So if people are not um, on our social media, we invite them to follow. We try really hard to keep updated of the work that's going on, our impact, the numbers that we have, and our needs list, which is one of the things that you were sharing as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. If you're an Amazon shopper, you, you easily make it out there and available for us to shop for RIFA through that's Amazon. Our hope. So. That's our hope. We have a lot of folks who do call and say, how can I help? And so uh, on Thursdays, typically, I think this week it was actually on Monday, but typically it's Thursdays when the, the needs list for the soup kitchen goes out. And then also for our community outreach, which is where we distribute, you know, food each day through the front door of RIFA. And a lot of times there's hygiene items as well that we yeah. give away. And so those are some of the things that we need. And it's just you know, opportunity for us to post that list. And then if we have the Amazon links, folks have said, gosh, it's just so easy. You know, you don't have to leave your home to do that shopping. Okay. So. so you can shop and send it directly. Mm -hmm. Directly okay. too. Okay. And as far as impact, um, that is another thing I think that shocks a lot of folks is just how many meals are distributed. Uh, we just got our cards printed. And last year in 2023, 611,405 meals were distributed through RIFA. And so when people ask me... That's it, done twice a day or... Well, we're open for... The soup kitchen is open breakfast and lunch every single day okay. of the year. And then for meals at night on Sunday, Monday, and Thursdays. Wow. And three of four Tuesdays. Okay. So, okay, mm -hmm. so you're doing three to four nights a week as mm -hmm. well. So Indeed. three meals a day. Yes, through the soup okay. kitchen. And then, of course, the snack backpack meals go out every single Friday. We reached a new high. Last Friday, there were 1,437 bags of food distributed through our elementary schools. And then, of course, we also, you know, the bus stop cafe that operates on spring break, which will be in a couple of weeks, and fall break, and summer as well. And then through our community outreach, which is where we hand the food, you know, distribute the food to the folks that come in through the front doors as well okay. for wow. their families. So, wow. It's up almost 95,000 meals from the year before, okay. from 2022. Mm -hmm. So reflective, I guess, of need and then also maybe Indeed. awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. It, Rife mm -hmm. has been here how long? Since 1976. Okay. We're just a couple of years away from our 50th anniversary. anniversary. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Let's see, if 1976 is 50 years ago. I'm trying to get the calculator to say how old I am. It scares me. <laughs> I remember when it started. I remember when it started. Yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. So that's 48 years. What a, what a great history. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the coming together of the faith community in a special way. Indeed. So We're it, so it, grateful for the yeah. folks who come alongside us. We right. could not do the work we do without partners who come and those, alongside uh, us. The, uh, the, the food distribution for Snack Backpack will continue during the summer going into the Absolutely. Every what single day. What do you call day? that bus? It's bus Stop Cafe. Bus Stop Cafe. Mm -hmm. There you mm -hmm. go. Okay. Well, it's always good to have you with Thank us. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you guys that reminder. This. It's a very important thing. Something sometimes we forget about and take for granted and go to the thrift store. Yes. Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it right there.
It's good to see you, Thank Denise, you. always. Well, we're delighted to have this young lady back with us, and she will be uh, talking with us a little bit later in this show. And this is Reese Horton. Reese. Whatever you do, I've already done. And you can try to catch up, but you'll just fall down. So don't think you're ahead of me. I'm too far gone. I'm too far gone. So high, you got a taste of the good life. I'm not where I was before, but you're still where I dropped you off. And whatever you do, I've already done. try to catch up but you'll just fall down so don't think you're ahead of me I'm too far gone I'm too far gone I never hear your name anymore it's because no one knows who you So, and whatever you do, I've already done, and you can try to catch up, but you'll just fall down, so don't think you're ahead of me, I'm too far gone. Too far gone. What's new to you is done for me. I'm out of your reach. What's new to you is done for me. I'm out of your reach. From time to time, life may throw us a curveball. Even with the best of efforts, maintaining the essentials like utilities can be difficult. With Utilicare, you can make a donation to help provide utility assistance to families right here in Jackson. Your contribution makes a difference for those families struggling to pay utility bills. Go online to learn more or donate. jacksenergy.com forward slash Utilicare. The Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation every two years does an unannounced on-site review to evaluate every facet of a water system. Inspection includes real-time water sampling, records reviews, personnel training, certification, and more. A perfect score is $5.99. For the third consecutive inspection covering the last six years, the Jackson Energy Authority water system achieved a perfect score, $5.99, 100%, three consecutive times. That seldom happens, but it happened now at JEA Today. Here 
you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Six in the City. We'll have more from Reese Horton coming up in this segment. We're pleased to, to introduce James Ross. He is the president CEO of West Tennessee Healthcare System. His friends call him JR. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you, Steve. 38 Thank and a half years he's been in the health system here. It's his first time to be with us. First time on you know, the show. So our agent finally have worked up. And <laughs> it's, it's a real thrill to have you. Here. She drives a hard bar. The hard bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. West Tennessee Healthcare is chartered for the physical and mental well being of our whole section of the country, right? Yes, sir. Uh, back in 1950, the original charter said that it's for the public benefit, particularly those that are uh, less fortunate and uh, also for mental health needs. And wow. so uh, from 1950 all through the years, the continuous growth has been around meeting those needs. We're a safety net hospital, but we're also a, a community provider across the 19 counties of West Tennessee. West Tennessee. So it's a, it's a stunning mission. It is. Not, a, not it everybody is. has that mission. It yep. is. Yep. I try not to think about it too. <laughs> okay, wow. well, well, at one time, you know, the hospital revenue-wise, you know, would, would share hundreds of thousands of dollars of city and county government. But then you say the margins have continued to decrease. What's happening in health care? So whenever COVID came along, we uh, had a, a significant financial downturn, uh, like a lot of other health systems, and we've continued to try to... Caused by... Well, the inflation. Low low infl okay, well, labor yeah. costs, everything else going on. The labor costs went out the roof. You had... Uh, supply costs that went out the roof, and you had the same fixed payment. And so that just doesn't compute. But we continue to do a lot of great things for the community and uh, giving back to the city and the county. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so what needs to happen from your, and I know you're administrator of a health system, and there are other people that are plugged in different dimensions of this, but in, in your world, what do you want to see happening in health care? You know, Steve, one of the one of the huge things that I've been, as I call it, my stump speech for the past couple of years deals with our TennCare or Medicaid program. We didn't expand Medicaid in the state of Tennessee. There's five states that are still not Medicaid expanded. And even without Medicaid expansion, we're only receiving reimbursement at about 62 cents on every dollar of cost. So for us, whenever I talk to our legislative folks, I'm not talking to them about commercial book of business or even Medicare. I'm talking to them about our Medicaid teen care program in the state. And thankfully, uh, this past year, the governor and legislature was able to pull some funds out of the teen care reserve and pass that on to hospitals across the state. If you're working on a 60 cent margin out of a dollar cost, okay, how do you offset that? How, how do you sustain this operation? Well, we have to run really tight cost structure and expense structure, but uh, we negotiate contracts with our commercial payers okay. to help offset some of that loss. And then with our Medicare population, we try to break even on the reimbursement there. So really it's our, uh, our ability to, uh, if you will, cost share with our uh, commercial book of business. Okay. So where does this organization go now? I mean, you, you own other hospitals now. I mean, there's a whole network now in West Tennessee. There are market challenges coming in. People talk about eliminating certificate of need and other things, just opening the market up. And so what happens with West Tennessee Healthcare? Well, West Tennessee Healthcare continues to meet the need and make a difference uh, for the years to come. And it requires us to adapt to the moving environment of which we're, we're in. You know, there's 78, predicted to be 78,000 uh, nurse shortage coming up in the next three to four years. There's 122,000 physician shortage coming up. So we're spending a lot of our time, energy, and effort now recruiting physicians, working with the UT Health Science uh, Center in Memphis to have more residencies here. I don't know if you guys know, but our family medicine residency program is ranked in the top three across uh, the country. So okay. here in Jackson, Tennessee, 36 uh, residents uh, that we help provide medical education for. Okay, wow. Yeah. Well, 
I don't know, if, well, it's by far our largest employer in this community. I don't know of any institutions more important to this city and to West Tennessee and West Tennessee Healthcare. And we wish you the best. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. That. Glad we, you're here. We, and glad yeah. you're doing better. Your health is much better. You're doing you. great. You're doing, doing great. great. Good. Yes, sir. Hope you'll come back and see us. Yes, sir. I okay. Will. All right. Thank thanks. You. James Ross. He's the president and CEO of West Tennessee Healthcare Systems. We're going back to the main stage. We welcome once again Reese Horton. Reese. Donating blood is safe, easy, and in less than an hour, you can save up to three lives. If you've donated with us before, thank you. We can't wait to see you again. If you've never donated before, now is the time. Give blood at Lifeline Blood Services today. Every three years, the American Public Power Association recognizes public power companies that demonstrate proficiency and reliability, workforce development, safety, and system improvement. The recognition, RP3. The highest level RP3 is the Diamond RP3. 
In 2023, JA's Electric Division received the Diamond RP3 Award for the eighth consecutive time. This never happened before, but it's JEA today. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood. Lifeline Blood Services provides blood to 17 hospitals and 12 airvac services in 20 counties. To make your donation, you can come to one of our two locations today. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Well, it was a real step in our history when communities started developing libraries that were open to, to everyone. Our Carnegie was, I guess, one of our first real step in that direction back turn of the last century. But now it's not just books and magazines and newspapers, the library is a lot more. Shane Plunk is with us. He's with the staff of the Jackson Mass County Public Library, works in the adult services area. So there's a lot more we can do now with a library card than check out books. There is. So a few years ago, we started this collection that we call the Library of Things. And that's something that has started to spread through the library world um, where people can check out stuff that is unusual, I guess, that, you know, is more than just a book. Um, and so we were able to get funding to do some of that as well. And every year we add some new stuff to that pile. Um, so you can come in and check out something like a bread maker. Um, you could check out an air fryer. Uh, we've got cake pans. We've got stuff you can cook with, stuff you can play with. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff. Wow. Yeah, um, it's a great collection that really shows that libraries are more than books, which is our favorite thing to say. Yeah, okay. It's not our official slogan, but I feel like it's really close. So where do you keep this stuff? Is it on display? Or? So what we have to do um, is keep a lot of the stuff in the back. All right. uh, when you come into the main library, you'll see on the top of one of our shelves, we have these DVD cases that we have put all of the pictures of the things you can check out on those so that it's easy to browse through what we have. Um, while not keeping the stuff out on the shelf, because that's a little hard to figure out. <laughs> Who determines the content of the library of things then? So a lot of it comes from feedback we've gotten from our patrons. Uh -huh. um, some of our staff members make, you know, suggestions, and then um, usually it's myself and Miss Dinah, our director, that talk over, you know, what we can actually make happen. Um, so usually every year we try to add a dozen or more new things for people to check out. Wow. I never thought about going to the library to get an air fryer. Yeah, no. that one's a brand new one. Okay. Um, I'm excited to try that one out. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff is things that are expensive that, you know, you, you might want to try it before you buy it. Okay. Um, or you might just use it once in a while and you don't want right. to, you know, we've got a cordless drill in the collection. So if you've got home repairs to make and you don't want to go buy a drill, <laughs> come check library. one out. Yeah, we've wow. got tons of stuff. Okay. So how do I find the list? So we've got, um, it is online. You can look through our catalog online, right. jmclibrary.org. Okay. Um, and we also have these lovely little brochures that have the whole list of everything in them as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of the things we've added this year, uh, the air fryer, like I said, a cake decorating kit, an instant pot, a bubble machine. Um, we've got a DVD and CD burner voice recorder, document scanners, wood burning kits. Okay. And then we've even got tons of board games and stuff like that you can check out too. Okay. All right. Wow. Well, well this is in addition on. to, of course, the library card now gives you access to, to subscriptions, to magazines, and it things does. way beyond just what's here. Right? Yeah, you can check out stuff physically. You can go on to um, Libby, which is an app for downloading eBooks and e-audio books. So you can do all of that from home without having to. So I can download an audio book free through the library. Mm -hmm. You sure can, wow. right to your phone. Never have to set foot in the library if you aren't able to or don't have time. Well, I've been buying those things like that. I need to get me a library card, don't you I? You do. Come I need to get a one. library card. <laughs> Jen, I'll be, my life will be changed. I'll have an air fryer and I'll be, I'll be reading all kinds of books in, in the car. There you go. Uh, uh, uh. So that, that'll be good. And that's just the beginning. It is. So. What else is going on in the library? So we are still doing a lot of our regular programs. Um, 
that you can find on our website or on our Facebook you as well. Yoga classes okay. and everything else. Line yoga right class. Now. We've got a line dance class. We have American Sign Language classes, which is one of my personal favorites. Right. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got story time for kids and everything yeah. else. Now, now, what are the hours for the library? So we have our main library downtown uh, that is open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 8 and then Friday and Saturday, nine to five, and then the North Branch location is open from nine to six, Monday through Friday. All right, all right. Shane, it's good to have you here. Thank you for appreciate having me. Appreciate very much, appreciate the work of the library, Donna, and then that entire staff. We'll be talking to Peter Knoll about PBS and West C. that's coming next, plus more from Reese as we continue, Six in the City. Want to receive account information via text? When you enroll in JA Alerts, you can. Text to get a bill balance, due date, set a payment extension, receive an outage notification, reply to report an electric outage, text JOIN, J-O-I-N, text JOIN to 53248-53248. Cell phone number must be current and attached to your JA account. Visit jacksenergy.com slash text alert for more information. At Southern Family Dentistry, we offer dental treatment for your entire family. We have the latest 3D digital x-ray system. We offer implants, veneers, teeth whitening, and all the other normal services you receive at the dental office. We have two offices, one in Milan and one in Jackson, and e broadband telephone services allows us to connect both of those offices. It doesn't matter which office the patient calls, we have the ability to speak to that patient at either location. Welcome back to Six in the City. Peter Knoll is with us, West Tennessee Public Television for West Tennessee. And you're talking about what, what show you're talking about? All Creatures Great it's and Small. It's one of our big favorites. Yeah. A lot of people love All Creatures Great and Small. It's, it well, is. I miss this so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. So what's yeah. this about? Um, animals, veterinarians, beautiful countryside. Not uh, not a reality show. It is drama. It is okay. real, real drama. drama. Just yeah. really neat, neat show. Yeah, it's really, it's comfort TV, but it's drama. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's one of the most popular. Right, so, yeah. so and I love animals. So. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, so all right, so they got the appeal going on. And we <laughs> launched um, a new uh, local talk show. So got sort talk of like, show yeah, right, so um, you know, the old days. So people that we know that are hosting it, right? Yeah, yeah, like Steve Beverly, uh, Tom Brett, Brett right. Julie, Cook. Julie Cook. Yeah, oh, so yeah, hosting, we have sorry. rotating hosts. So they are they are interviewing whom? Whom? Uh, different people. Um, coming up uh, in March, we're going to have um, like Ginger from the health department, okay. and you know, is right. flu season still here? Should we get a flu shot? Right. What's the latest on COVID? What other health it's concerns? Still here. Talked to her yesterday. Yes, yes it's still yeah, here. exactly. Yeah. So we'll get sort of get updates from the health department. Um, the plant manager. Um, from Blue Oval SK joins us okay. to sit down. Uh, how's the construction going? What about jobs? Where she, how, what's the best way to apply? Um, we'll be finding out from that. Um, uh, we'll also be talking to Kyle Spurgeon and Kyle Barron from the Greater Jackson Chamber. Okay. So just, they're one topic shows, um, 30 minutes, and it airs Thursday nights at 8.30, okay. and then repeats a few times, including Sunday nights at 6.30, and of course streaming. Um, it goes, it harkens back to the old days of television where there were public affairs shows, shows yeah. sort of like yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just thought it needs a, we need a place in West Tennessee right to have that. for people to have exactly a, right. a good conversation yeah. that's more than just a soundbite, that's more than just a 90 second, two minute story that can talk for 30 minutes about a topic. Yeah. It's a great addition, and it's important because, like I said, those those shows have generally gone the way of the wind. Yeah, so we're it's bringing it back. Tennessee episode. is talking, You're and you also, can log in now and stream. He's about to do his 500th episode of TV Classic. Steve Beverly has been doing this for decades. Yes. And now he, you're adding him to the rotation. Yes. The uh, well, we, you know, I've been a fan of TV Classics, Steve Beverly's TV class, Classics on e Channel uh, 6, JEA, E Plus 6. And I, I got to talking to Steve because he helps us out hosting various shows. 
And it's like, well, how many shows you got in the can? He's got hundreds. Yeah. Because he loves classic TV. And I thought, we are Lawrence Welk. Every Saturday night at 7 o'clock, it's a staple. I actually get letters from people saying, don't touch it. They love it. <laughs> Is that right? Um, okay. And there's, there's several hundred stations across the country, PBS, that still, still, still it. run it in that same time period it aired for. Okay. And so we thought, I wonder if Steve would want those to air on West Tennessee PBS Channel 11. And he said, I would love to. So starting on March 16th, that Saturday night at 6, um, we have a new uh, neighbor on the Saturday night lineup right before Lawrence Welk. It's Steve Beverly's TV Classic. So GEA fans yeah. will know about it. So that's at 7.30 going to 8? It's, it's, it's 6 o'clock, and he'll do 6 to 8. To 8, okay. And, then and Lawrence, then Welk, Lawrence Welk at 7. Yeah, okay. he's doing a special hour long. And his very first episode, um, the, the last half hour, is the pilot episode of the Lawrence Welk Show. <laughs> okay. So if you well, want to see how it all that. started... Found that in public domain. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, it's it's the original, original pilot that started all. There's no live audience. It's piped in music, um, and uh, the Lawrence Welk story. I think Steve said it's the longest running variety show in primetime television history yeah, that's ever. Yeah, that's wow. Peter knows yeah. us with Western C P B S. You're making a real effort to make this a local station. In yeah, I really believe the future of television is being as local as you can be. Um, you know, and that's why we're here. You know, we are licensed as a community television station. And so um, we're trying to be as local as we can. A good example is um, Don McCory from the African American Chamber Jim. here in Jackson, Madison County, sent out a press release about their Jewel Awards. He probably was here talking right. about it. He was. And then, you know, our director of production, Daryl Carner, goes, Pete, you're going to hate me, but uh, I think we should see if they got a TV partner. And I said, well, we can ask. Yeah, right. And so they said, oh, no, we don't. And yeah. we were like, well, we'd love to. You know, we try and, you know, be a media outlet for those that don't have one. Yeah. And he's like, oh, we would love to. So, you know, basically, less than two weeks later, we're at the Civic Center, okay. you know. Right. Uh, doing the Jewel Awards, which we're yeah. airing it multiple times right. now and streaming. And it was just exciting to be there because yeah. it's never been on TV before. Yeah. And Ooh. there's just all those type of things all over West Tennessee yeah. that we want to bring right. yeah. to, to people. we got a good relationship with these guys because we share this. And we, we share for We're yes. sharing it. Yes, we love, love it. Yeah, Peter, we're glad to have you. Well, you've been in West Tennessee with NBC 39, but you found a home at PBS. I lo love it. It's it's waking up every day going, yeah. what good can we yeah. do? And the more, you know, the only thing stopping us is fun. There you go. So give and money. so, yeah, westtnpbs.org. Click on the donate tab. As little as, you know, a cup of coffee yeah, a right. month can help yeah. us. All right. Good to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. We're delighted to have this lady with us, and we'll be talking to her next, but she's on the main stage right now. Welcome back, Miss Reese Horton. I'm with you No place we won't pass through And we can stop And look at the view We spend the night And I'm up for two Just as long as I'm with you doesn't matter to me it's all about the company the coastline or the rockies at home in mississippi as long as i'm with you no place we won't pass through can fly to paradise or somewhere we won't go twice just as long as i'm with you yeah i hope we never look back 
just rolling like a train on a track. Be my guide in the night. I can do anything with you. As long as I'm with you. No place we won't pass through. blue or hit your right somewhere new just as long as I'm with you yeah. as long as I'm with you yeah. as long as I'm with you Hi, I'm here to ask the people of Jackson to be a part of a groundbreaking program, Four Minute City. Every minute you don't get help after a sudden cardiac arrest, your chance of survival decreases by 10%. That's why Friends of Heart and the Jackson Fire Department have created a care team. A group of everyday citizens trained, equipped, and ready to save lives in our community. Please call this number or visit our website. Together, we can save lives. Tired of internet that leaves you waiting and monitoring your usage with extra fees? Switch to E-Plus Broadband from the Jackson Energy Authority for fiber optic internet with the fastest speeds to keep everyone connected. Enjoy being online as much as you want without worrying about extra fees or data usage limits. Perfect for when you need to download and upload large files, stream videos, or use your favorite video conferencing app. E-Plus Broadband, fastest internet, no data caps, no slowdowns, no worries. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Well, she's been performing through all this show, and we're delighted to have this opportunity to talk with her. Reese Horton is with us. She's a junior at Ole Miss. She's from Ripley, Mississippi. She lives in Oxford and near campus and all that stuff, so it's good to have you. What are you majoring in there? Psychology. Okay. Yes. Keep her away, Muffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you pick psychology for a major? So I've always been a very compassionate person, and I love connecting with people and understanding people. And so in the future in my career, I hope I can just be somebody that anybody can come to and talk to, whatever they need, be okay. a very understanding person. Right. Okay. Do you tend to pursue music as a, as a career? Yes. Okay. So I love doing this like on the weekends and everything, but as long as I live, I hope I'm playing music and singing. Okay. When did you start? So I started singing probably when I was 12, I would say, at church and doing local talent shows and things like that. And then I picked up the guitar at 15 and I taught myself how to play. And then I took lessons from um, some very special men that I still hold very de dear to my heart. So, and then it's just progressed from there. Wow. And you've yes. been singing originals that, yes. that you wrote yes. today. Yes, these okay. are original songs, yes. Okay. So when did you start writing? So at the beginning of this year. So that was okay. one of my New Year's resolutions this year. I told myself I was going to start writing songs because that's really the key to all of it is having original music. Mm. I wonder how you structure songs now because... You know, I remember mm -hmm. you used to try to rhyme them at the end of the line. I hear writers now that rhyme as they go through. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a yes. staccato style. I mean, the, the, yes. the writing styles in country music have changed. Yes, you know? yes, you know? very much. And so mm -hmm. where do you see yourself going with this? You're trying to pitch, pitch songs? And yes. So I would love to sell my songs to other singers. I would love to write with other people. 
and just meet as many people as I can and still perform. But yeah, just keep going. All right. You have a, well, I hate to say it, it's not a category anymore. How do you, how do you describe your music or your writing? Style? So I would describe it as singer songwriter, not okay. exactly country and not exactly pop, but just very honest and very true to myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. The ideas come from? Uh, everywhere. It comes from people I meet, from relationships I have, friendships, my family, things I've gone through, just every aspect of life. Lyric first or music? Music first, actually. Is that right? Okay. So I pick out chords that I love or that sound cool or interesting, and then I kind of start humming a melody, and then the words come to me after that. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And taught yourself to play the guitar. Yes. Wow. I first taught myself from YouTube and the internet, and then took a few lessons from different people. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are there writers that you say, okay, that's what I'd like to Yes, be? definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, Taylor Swift, she's yeah. awesome. But also Sheryl Crow, Miranda Lambert, a lot of women that I look up to. So when you're listening to them now, that, now that you're writing, mm -hmm. I, I, I get, I like, when I sit around and watch ball games with coaches, they, they mm -hmm. see a different game than I do. Mm -hmm. So now that you're writing, do you tune into to songs differently now? I do, Absolutely. I think, oh, that's cool, or like, I could have written that, or okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. I definitely see where they're coming from now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But essentially, you start with the music, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that's a, that's a, there's different combinations out there. Yes. Okay. Have you recorded yet? Recording material yet? So, hopefully, very soon, I will record these, and I'm going to record them at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley. It's a local radio station and recording studio, and it's owned by two very special people, the Marcellises, that I have gone to church with and been very close to in the community. So, yeah. All right, so it's like in the old days, you know, when you go, go into mm -hmm. Nashville, so the first recordings were done a lot of times with radio stations. Yes, you know, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. production rooms when they weren't doing commercials. And do that again. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this how this fares for you. Yes, uh, thank you. Very talented. We're, we're delighted you spend the time with us. Thank you. Reese Houston, is there ReeseHouston.com or? So, I have a Facebook page and an Instagram, Reese Horton Music, Horton. and then on um, TikTok, I post videos on there as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So, mm -hmm. so Reese Horton Music. Music. Yes. Dot com. Yes. Right. Okay. ReeseHortonMusic.com. Yes. So, what all is there? So I have videos of me singing. I post um, announcements about where I'm going to be playing, gigs I'm playing at, mm -hmm. and just all kinds of stuff. All right. Okay. right. ReeseHortonMusic.com. Ripley, Mississippi, University of Mississippi. And from That's here, right. we don't know. Exactly. We'll see where this goes. But she yes. started here, I think, when she was 18. Didn't you yes. sing with us when you were 18? I did. Okay. It's good to have you back. Thank you all. We'll be back with more in just a moment, including more with Reese as we continue this Six in the city. That's my neighbor Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe. Think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knucklehead. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? 
Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. I want to thank all of our guests for being with us today. It's always a reminder of the many different things going on in this community. Wow. And you are just a blessed place to be and, and a lot of great things going on. Very. And uh, good to have you back with us. We, we were talking to, to JR about health and all this other stuff and then, and then everybody else. And you just got through, you fought that COVID stuff. And I did. Got, yeah. Got La back. Last week was not fun. <laughs> it's like, you know, we tried to get that stuff gone away but it, it hadn't gone away it is, it is still around i'm gl glad you're back and glad things glad things are well out there well it uh we had a special thing today our ceo is monty cooper and monty cooper was on talk radio 101.5 today for about an hour and 15 minutes took calls and texts and everything else and so it, i think he handled himself pretty well i think well. he represented well yeah he uh you know not that he needs our voice, voice of approval but <laughs> but, but it, it was good good to hear him on and he's very comfortable in his own skin it was a great opportunity out there we appreciate him and, and his leadership of, of this company. Appreciate you being with us. Don't forget all the special things that are coming up in Jackson, Tennessee. We're, we just got through the Blue Sway Dinner and Auction and all these other things, but don't don't worry. We've got plenty more events that are coming up, and you'll be hearing about them. We got, uh, what have we got? Blue Cross Championship started this Saturday? Wow. I get the message in my ear here. So be, be tuned. We'll have all the championship games from the different Division One and Division Two. So we'll start those Saturday. All right, right here. What time will they start? 11 o'clock, Saturday morning, right here at E Plus TV 6. So thanks for being. And we have election returns coming up next week on March the 5th. Final day to advance vote today. We'll have that all. Right. Well, Reese, now that we've visited you, we're going to turn it loose and let our cares, cares out here. Reese Horton is ReeseHortonMusic.com. wrong 